Hello, in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up and the best settings for your traditional system where you have that large hot water tank, you have a boiler and some central heating controls. On this system, the boiler is the ideal logic system too. So if you have this boiler, I'm going to go through everything that you need to know about that boiler. But I'm also covering all other heat only and system boilers. So no matter what boiler you got, by the end of the video, you should know the best settings for your boiler. So I'm going to show you the correct settings for a boiler on a traditional system and then how you may need to adjust your boiler to suit your system. I'll also cover your hot water temperature, how you adjust that and what it should be set to. And of course your room thermostat and how that operates and what to do if your house is still a little chilly. If you want to know a little bit more about your motorized valves, then at the end of the video, I'll explain how they operate and how you can check if they're working correctly. Now I'm not gonna go through your programmer, that's for another video. So I'm gonna take it that you know how to turn your heating or your hot water on and off. I want to quickly let you know that down in the description, you'll find lots of links to other really helpful videos, which I have made. Right, now let's get on with how to set up and operate your traditional system. So here is our ideal, a logic system to boiler. Now this boiler heats up our hot water tank and also our central heating. Now, one of the differences between this boiler and a standard boiler is this boiler has a pressure gauge on the front of it. And some of the other ideal system boilers and heat only boilers also have an additional dial on the front. With any system boiler where you have this pressure gauge, we want to keep our black pointer in the green area. So that's between the one and the two, ideally around 1.5 bar. I'll go into how we adjust this later in the video. Moving on to your boiler thermostat, this adjusts the temperature that your boiler runs at. Now I find a lot of my customers are quite confused about what temperature they should be setting their boiler to. Because we're all going for an energy crisis right now and it's important that we make our boilers as efficient as possible. Now here's a misunderstanding which I come across regularly. And that is some boilers have two controls, one showing hot water and one showing central heating. Now unless you have the specific controls which go with that boiler, then that hot water control is not connected to your hot water. You can turn the dial and it looks like you're setting your hot water, but in actual fact, it does absolutely nothing. The way to check if this hot water control has any effects on your hot water is just to turn it down to zero and see if it affects your hot water temperature in a couple of days. If that control has no effect over your hot water, you'll know that all the temperatures are controlled by that one boiler thermostat, which normally has a picture of a radiator on it. Now this dial has no stop point. You can just keep rotating it and then you'll see the target temperature in the top of the display there changing as we turn the dial. Now this target temperature is a temperature that our boiler is trying to heat up to. And the two larger numbers is the actual temperature that the boiler is running at. And you'll see those two larger numbers continuously changing as your boiler heats your system. And the boiler will be trying to heat the system up to that target temperature, which we set. Now the lowest running temperature that we can set this boiler to is 30 degrees. But in the average house, there's probably never a time where we want to set that temperature that low. If we turn the dial the other way, we can turn the temperature right up to its maximum and the maximum temperature we can set this boiler to is 80 degrees. Now, again, there's probably not a time when we're going to want to set our temperature at 80 degrees because also this would make the boiler very inefficient. So what temperature should we be setting our boiler to? Well, because we have a hot water cylinder or tank, whatever you prefer to call it, the lowest temperature we should be setting our boiler to when we have a hot water cylinder is between 60 and 65 degrees. Now, the reason for that is because we have that large hot water cylinder, which is full of stored hot water. And with all stored water, there's a chance of getting Legionnaire's disease. Now at 60 degrees and above, that will kill any Legionnaire's disease that may be in the water. So that's why when you have that traditional system and you have a hot water cylinder, you should set your temperature not lower than 60 degrees. So you can see on this boiler, I've set it to 65 degrees. I'll come back to setting your hot water temperature in just a minute. Now let's not forget that this boiler also heats up our radiators to heat up our house. 
Now this is where it can get a little confusing, but I'll try and keep it as straightforward as possible. Now we've established that we shouldn't set our boiler running temperature lower than 60 degrees if we have that hot water cylinder. But we may need to set it higher to get our house to a nice temperature. Now every house should have a room thermostat, whether it's an analog dial style or a programmable room thermostat like this Honeywell T3R. Now, if you're a homeowner who doesn't have a room thermostat and you've got thermostatic radiator valves on all your radiators and you say, well, you don't need one. Well, I'm afraid you've been misinformed and you should have one. Besides the point that it's a building regulation, it's going to make your system even more efficient. And if you watch my video on 10 ways to save yourself some energy, the first tip will explain why you should have a room thermostat. Now, going back to our room thermostat. Your room thermostat controls how hot your house gets. It doesn't control how hot your radiators get. That's the job of your boiler. Now, if you set your room thermostat to say 21 or 22 degrees, but when your heating comes on, the house doesn't get to that temperature and it just feels a bit chilly. Well, that's the time you turn the boiler thermostat up. That's going to make your radiators hotter, which is then going to put more heat into the house, making your house warmer. And then hopefully your house is going to reach the temperature you set your room thermostat to. And then the room thermostat will then turn the boiler and the central heating off. Now, if you find that your house still isn't warm enough, even if you set your boiler temperature higher or even to its maximum, make sure that you haven't got radiator thermostats turned down low. That will make your radiator cooler and of course make your room cooler. If you've got some radiators which are really hot and then some which aren't so hot, then maybe the thermostat on the radiator is faulty or maybe this system just needs balancing. I've made two separate videos covering radiator balancing and faulty thermostatic radiator valves. So I hope that's helped you understand how your boiler heats your house. Now you may be thinking, I've turned my temperature of my boiler up, so that's going to make my hot water hotter. And your water is already scalding hot at 60 degrees and you don't want it any hotter. Well, that's where the cylinder thermostat comes in. Now, all hot water cylinders will have a cylinder thermostat, unless it is a really, really old system. Just before I show you your settings for your hot water, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is Mark Ballard and I've been a gas registered engineer for nearly 30 years. The aim of my channel is to help you with your central heating and your plumbing. If you find this video at all useful, then please give me that little bit of feedback by clicking on that thumbs up or the subscribe. You can ring on the bell if you want to receive a notification. And of course, you can share the video with your friends. If you visit my website, I have categorized all my videos and products and parts that I recommend so you can easily find what you're looking for. And I'd like to say a really big thank you to everybody who's bought me a cup of coffee and left me a donation in my toolbox fund. It's really appreciated and it does really help me to make more videos which will hopefully help you. Now what your cylinder thermostat does is it controls the temperature that your hot water gets to. Now, like I said earlier, because we have stored water, we want to heat our hot water up to 60 degrees because at that temperature, it'll kill any nasty bugs that may be in the water. Now you can see on this thermostat here, the dial is set at 60 degrees. Now what happens is our boiler is running at 65 degrees. And when our hot water reaches 60 degrees, the cylinder thermostat will stop the boiler from heating the water anymore. If we were to set the boiler running temperature lower than 60 degrees, then our hot water would never reach 60 degrees, killing those nasty bugs. And the boiler would stay constantly running, continuously cycling on and off, as the hot water will never reach that 60 degrees that we set the cylinder thermostat to, so the cylinder thermostat will not turn the boiler off, which would make heating your hot water very inefficient. Now these cylinder thermostats aren't always very accurate. So although you may have the cylinder thermostat set at 60, it might actually be heating your hot water up to a much higher temperature. So if you do have really scalding water coming out of your taps, if you're able to check that with a thermometer and you find the water is way over 60 degrees, you could then adjust the cylinder thermostat down a bit lower. Now there is some talk at the moment in the industry that maybe we can set the hot water temperature down lower than 60 degrees. 
This will reduce our energy consumption and of course reduce our gas bills. So the thought behind this is that Legionnaire's disease only grows in water which is sitting still, so stagnant water. And if you're using your hot water every day and replacing the water in the tank with fresh water, then the water's never sat still long enough for that nasty bacteria to start growing. So in theory, you could set your hot water temperature down lower than 60 degrees. Now, like I said, this is still all in discussion and I am definitely not telling you to go turning your cylinder thermostats down lower than 60 degrees. But on my travels, I definitely come across households where the cylinder thermostats are turned down lower than 60 degrees. Now, this is just a quick note to everyone. It's recommended that if you go on holiday for a couple of weeks, when you return, you should always just run all your taps and flush out all the water that may be in your system because obviously it's been sat still for a couple of weeks. One last thing, most hot water cylinders will have an immersion heater. That's an electric heater, which you can switch on and use to heat your hot water just in case your boiler breaks down. Now this should always be switched off because you don't want to be heating your hot water with your immersion heater and your gas boiler. That would be incredibly inefficient. And immersion heaters in general aren't very efficient because they're electric. So follow the wire back from the immersion heater and make sure that the switch is turned off. I do visit homes where immersion heaters have been accidentally turned on. So do check that yours is turned off. Hopefully that covers everything you should need to know about setting your boiler temperature for your hot water and your central heating. So moving on to fault codes, your boiler has a fault code in the display and the boiler has stopped working. All we can do then is to press the reset button on the front of the boiler. That will do a reset of your boiler and hopefully it will start working again. If it doesn't and that fault code keeps coming back on your front of your boiler, then there's not a lot you can do. You can check to make sure that your gas supply is still turned on at the meter. If you've got a gas hob or a fire, maybe just make sure that that is working so you know you definitely got gas. Other than that, you will then need to call a gas registered engineer to come and take a look at your boiler. Resetting your boiler every now and again is absolutely fine because sometimes they might get a little hiccup. But if you're constantly resetting your boiler, then obviously indicates there's a fault there and you might actually be damaging your boiler or your system by constantly resetting it. So do call a gas registered engineer if you're having to reset your boiler regularly. Now I've just reset this boiler and the zero zero has changed to a temperature indicating that the boiler is now being told to come on. And now a flame has appeared in the top there showing us that the boiler is now running. And the temperature at the bottom of the display will start to rise as the boiler starts heating up our central heating or our hot water. So after resetting this boiler, it's working absolutely fine. Moving on to our buttons and display. Now the button on the left, that's the mode button, that will turn your boiler on and off. If I press the button, you can see the boiler then says off in the display and I'll no longer be able to get hot water or central heating. If I press the button again, it then says on in display and we'll be able to get hot water and central heating again. If you have a dial on the left hand side of the boiler, obviously that would do exactly the same thing and turn the boiler on and off. But there's really not many occasions where you're going to want to turn your boiler off. Now, if you have a system boiler, you're going to have a pressure gauge of some description on the front of your boiler. Now, if your pressure drops down too low, your boiler is going to stop working and you're going to get a fault code come up in the display. Now you can see on this ideal system boiler, the pressure gauge is reading zero. And in the digital display, we can see it says F01. Now you can't just press the reset button for this fault. We need to find our filling loop and top the system back up with water. So the pressure gauge would then read about one and a half bar. Now your filling loop can be absolutely anywhere on your central heating system. But the most usual places would be underneath the boiler or in your airing cupboard with the hot water cylinder and all the controls. Now that's exactly where this filling loop is and what we're looking for is a silver braided pipe with a valve at each end with a handle on it. Now not all filling loops look like this one. But I can assure you that if you do have a boiler that has a pressure gauge on the front of it, you will have a filling loop somewhere on your system. And it's just a case of hunting around and trying to find it. 
Now this system also has a pressure gauge with the filling loop. So I can see exactly how much pressure I'm putting into the system because we don't want to put too much pressure in the system because that's going to give us more problems. So all we need to do is to turn one of the handles to open up the valve. And then once we've done that, we'll then do the other handle also. So I've opened this valve here and now I'm going to open the other valve at the top here. And then I should hear some water noise as the water starts going into the system. And then we want to keep an eye on the pressure gauge and make sure that we don't put too much pressure in the system. Now, when the pressure gauge reaches at 0.8 of a bar, you'll see the display change and it goes back to its normal standby screen. But I'm going to keep topping the boiler up until I get to 1.5 bar. Now you may need two people to help you do this if there's no pressure gauge where the filling loop is. Because as I said, you don't want to put too much pressure into the system. So now the pressure gauge is just about on the 1.5 bar. So I'm now going to turn off the two valves on the filling loop in the airing cupboard. And that's it. Our boiler is back up and running again. I thought I'd just add it's quite normal if you have a pressure gauge upstairs and your ball is downstairs for the two gauges to read slightly different pressures. Another quick tip, when the handle is across the valve, the valve is shut. When the handle is in line with the valve or the pipework, then the valve is open. Now, if you want to know how your motorized valves work, I'll show you that in just a sec. But that's about it for how your boiler operates and how to set up all your controls on your central heating system. I hope that all makes sense. It is all pretty straightforward, but at the same time, I fully understand it is a little bit complicated. So what do these motorized valves do and how can you tell if they're working? So it's very easy for me to show you on this hot water zone valve. So here we have two zone valves. This one is for the central heating and this one is for our hot water. Now these zone valves have an electric motor inside them and they open and close the valve. Letting water flow around our hot water system or letting it flow around our central heating system. You may have a mid position valve instead of zone valves. That does exactly the same thing. It just uses one valve instead of two. And for various reasons, I prefer a mid position valve, but that's for another video. So how can you tell if your valves are operating? So we want to turn our hot water on. So make sure that your timer or programmer has the hot water turned on. Now the cylinder thermostat is just a switch. And when we turn it up and I hear a click, I know that it's now telling the hot water to be heated. And when I go to the zone valve, the zone valve should now be opening up and this lever should start becoming loose as the valve opens up. So now I know that this valve here has now just opened up. When it fully opens, it will then press on a micro switch inside the valve, which then turns your boiler and pump on. When we then turn the cylinder thermostat down, again, we'll hear a click. We should then hear the zone valve make a whirring sound and we see the lever move back across, indicating that it has now closed, turning off the hot water. Mid position valves work exactly the same. Obviously, whenever you turn something on, we see the lever move across and it will stay in that position until something else is selected. Mid position valves will always have one port or even both ports open and the motor will move the valve backwards and forwards, selecting either hot water or central heating or both. If when you select central heating or hot water, the valve doesn't move, then that may indicate that your valve is faulty. It's very easy to tell with zone valves because they are either shut or they're open. So that's just a brief summary of how mid position valves and zone valves work and how you can tell if they are working. So I hope that helps you out. Don't forget, check in the description below where there's lots of other useful videos. So that's about it then. So if you want to watch my video on 10 ways to reduce your gas bill, you can click on the video just here. And of course, you can click on subscribe. You can click on the bell. Give me a thumbs up. Share it with your friends. And it's always my toolbox friend. Bye for now. And I'll see you next time.